wish me luck, I'm gonna need it. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. And when he describes him, it's not a description of a man. He says, the world cannot see or know him. Well, the world could see Muhammad, couldn't it? The Paraclete, or King James lovers, will know him as the Comforter. In 1 John chapter 2, verse number 1, it reads as the following, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin, but if anybody does sin, we have a comforter with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. In John chapter 14, verse number 16, Jesus says the following, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another comforter to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. What was Jesus? Jesus was a man and a prophet, even Christians recognize that. So the other comforter is also a man and a prophet, because you, in the Greek the word used is alos, which means one of the same kind. In Greek they have two words, alos or heteros. If the word heteros is used, it's, another of the same, uh, it's not of the same kind. For example, if I said, use the word heteros for Mercedes, and I will give you a heteros car, that means not another Mercedes, but another car, maybe a Toyota or something. But if I say alos, that means I will get you another Mercedes. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. So when Jesus said, another comforter, he meant another one like him. And since he was a man and a prophet, the other comforter will also be a man and a prophet, unless it can be proven that Jesus is God. Jesus, Remember, Jesus said the Spirit is going to come to his disciples at that time. When Jesus is saying the Spirit will come to you, he's saying to Peter, Paul, he's saying to you, to Peter, Peter James and John, he's saying to you, the Spirit is coming to you. Now, if he was referring to a prophet coming in 600 years' time, he, he, he wouldn't say he's coming to you because he wasn't coming to them, was he? They'd, they'd be dead for 600 years. Sam McGreen still never answered my point where he said that um, the Comforter was promised to the disciples, so it can't be Muhammad who came 600 years later. So will Samuel Green admit that Jesus cannot be the prophet like Moses because it was promised to Jews 1400 years before Jesus? This is why some Jews claim that Joshua was the fulfillment of it. So I'd like Samuel Green to either take back his words that it can't be referring to Muhammad because he came 600 years later, or admit that Jesus is not the prophet like Moses. And when he describes him, it's not a description of a man. He says, the world cannot see or know him. Well, the world could see Muhammad, couldn't it? The world saw Muhammad. He lives in his disciples. Now, Muhammad doesn't live in the disciples of Jesus. Remember, Jesus said the Spirit is going to come to his disciples at that time. <laughs> then he said, oh, um, Jesus said that um, the Spirit will be in you. But Jesus also said to his disciples in the same speech, I am in you and you are in me. So if Samuel Green wants to take that literally, then he must take um, that the disciples were literally inside Jesus. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now, Christians maintain that this is talking about the Holy Spirit. 
But according to the Gospels themselves, the Holy Spirit was still present, as in Luke chapter 1, verse 41. Luke chapter 1, verse 67. And John chapter 20, verse 22, the disciples received it from Jesus. So if the disciples received the Holy Spirit while Jesus was still with them, then how can the Comforter be the one to come when Jesus leaves, if they received it while he was still with them? Then um, Samuel Green actually and, um, proved my point in my opening statement. Jesus said, I must leave for the Comforter to come. But Samuel himself mentioned that in John chapter 20, um, 20 verse 22, the disciples received the Holy Spirit while Jesus was still there. And with that, he breathed and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. And so the promise that he gives of, of the Spirit coming is what they actually receive at the end of the Gospel. So Jesus has to leave for the Comforter to come, but they receive the comfort, uh, the Spirit while he's still there. That's a contradiction. Can Samuel Green still um, tell us like, once again that Jesus must leave for the Comforter to come, but according to John chapter 20, verse 22, they received the Spirit while Jesus was with them. You said that Jesus, uh, it's contradictory because Jesus said that the Spirit wouldn't come until he had left. The Spirit wouldn't come until he had left. And yet, we read at the end of John's Gospel that the Spirit came. And he's saying, well, that's a contradiction because he hasn't left. Yes, he has left because when he died, he rose again and ascended to the Father. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not. I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. So he had left. That's the leaving he's talking about. And then he came back to his disciples and appeared to them for, for 40 days. So please just read it, because if you read John's Gospel, you'll see what the, the leaving and returning that he's talking about are. He rose again and ascended to the Father. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And with that, he breathed and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. In verse 26, we're told that the, the Spirit is sent in Jesus' name. Now, Muhammad wasn't sent in Jesus' name. So again, I'm just asking you to read this in context. It actually says it's the Holy Spirit. Then he said, oh, this Comforter will come in Jesus' name. But as the biblical scholar C.K. Barrett mentions, the phrase in my name could be understood as in my place. Also, the good, uh, good speed, the Bible translate in this way. And he gives two examples. Mark chapter 14, Jesus says, In my name many shall come, saying, I am the Messiah. Do false messiahs come in the name of Jesus, claiming to be him? Or do they come in the place of Jesus, claiming to, um, that they're the Messiah? Also in Matthew chapter 10, verse 41, Jesus says, He who receives a prophet in the name of another prophet, or he who receives a good person in the name of a good person, now people receive prophets in the place of prophets, not in the name. This is where Jesus is speaking again on the paraclete, and he says, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. And so, 
Jesus actually says, it's the Holy Spirit. He actually specifically says that. Also, Samuel mentions in the Paraclete sayings that Jesus says it's the Holy Spirit. But as the same scholar C.K. Barrett and Raymond Brown point out, that the original reading might be the Spirit, not the Holy Spirit. Even this old Syriac manuscript doesn't have the word holy in there. And Gary M. Burge, uh, in his commentary on the New International Version of the Bible, actually mentions that there's variant readings. Some say Spirit of Truth, some say just the Spirit. And according to the language of John, which I quoted in my opening statement in the book of 1st John, the word prophet and spirit are synonymous. This is what happens. Allah describes it to us in the Holy Quran. When truth is hurled against falsehood, it knocks out its brains. It knocks out its brains. The Prophet of Allah, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Qul ya ahla al-kitab ta'alaw ila kalimatin sawa'im baynana wa baynakum. Alla na'buda illa Allah wa la nushrika bihi shay'a. ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا من دون الله فإن تولوا فقولوا اشهدوا بأننا مسلمون Jesus spoke about somebody to come after him, the paraclete. In 1 John, Jesus is called a comforter. In John 14, verse number 16, Jesus says the following, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. Also, there's indications that this comforter is actually the prophet like Moses. Because in John chapter 16, it reads, He will not speak on his own authority. He will only speak where he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Does that not sound like Deuteronomy? I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak all that I command him. In fact, we know the prophet like Moses is supposed to foretell the future, because that's why the test of prophecy was given straight after uh, the verse is speaking about the prophet like Moses. Now, if... This comforter is the Holy Spirit who's supposed to be 100% God. Can you imagine a God who doesn't speak on his own authority? A God who has to be told what to say? He has to speak what he hears? I don't know about Jews, but that does not make sense to me at all. The paraclete does not speak on his own authority, but reveals what is to come. Now, Zachar said, well, you know, how can that be God? Each of the divine persons has chosen to take a different role in the salvation of the economy, and they do so willfully and freely. And what this means is, could any mere creature ever say that they per perfectly do what God has assigned them to do? Even Muhammad had to be told his sins were forgiven, right? But the paraclete has no sins to be forgiven.
Dr. White mentions in the Paraclete sayings that verse 26 says it's the Holy Spirit, but as Gary M. Burge shows in the new NIV commentary, not all manuscripts agree with Dr. White. Some say spirit of truth, and I've already shown from 1 John that the word spirit can be interpreted as a prophet, and remember he shall not speak on his own authority. Please think about this. It's not rocket science. God speaks on his own authority. If he speaks on anyone's authority, he's not God. Common sense. Once again, I'm asking Dr. White to explain to everybody that the comforter who's supposed to come, he does not speak on his own authority. Can you imagine a God who does not speak on his own authority? No! No, no, no! 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 What? No! He shall speak what he hears. Can you imagine a God that has to be told what to say, folks? Come on, we don't need um, degrees to understand that God does not be told what to say, and God does not sp uh, speak on anybody else's authority. So please explain it to us, Dr. Way. If us Muslims don't understand things, then you can explain to everybody here how this role system works. This comforter to come after Jesus is like the prophet like Moses. He fits the description of the prophet like Moses, and Jews and Christians were still waiting for him in the 7th century. So as far as Dr. White cannot disprove my points of Surah 7157, we must admit that there was a prophet who is going to be like Moses, We are told, can you imagine a God? Can you imagine a God who would do these things? Who would, who would be told what to say in regards to the Holy Spirit? Guess what, folks? I can imagine a God who loved me so much that he entered into his own realm to give his life so I might live. That's an amazing thing to imagine. Thank you. After all of the rubbish they gave, they gave no textual proof, everything was about how they feel and how Jesus made them feel and how this made them feel and how that made them feel. Not only did I say, well, making you feel good is no evidence for anything because the drug addict, drug addict will say the drugs make them feel good. Can you imagine a God who does not speak on his own authority? I can imagine a God who loved me so much that he entered into his own realm to give his life so I might live. That's an amazing thing to imagine. Can you imagine a God who does not speak on his own authority? What? No! وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاةِ وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدٍ فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ قَالُوا هَذَا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ اللهم صل على محمد يا رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم